Stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these Excuse are the lovely me. ladies Excuse of Motorsports. And Hi, everybody. I'm Janine Lauschak, and this is the 1037th edition of happen. Motorsports <laughs> Unlimited. As you know, we're trying to get everyone excited about the approaching 2007 summer motorsports season. When we say everyone, we mean everyone. In just a few short weeks, May 5th, 2007, it will be the Bridgeview Sports Dome Car Show. That's the tweener, not winter, not summer. They can do it because the weather is always perfect inside the dome. The following day, May 6th, 2007, J.C. Whitney opens the outdoor summer car show season in LaSalle, Illinois. After that, the floodgates open and everything starts popping. The racetracks open, the marinas open. Summer will be in full swing before you know it. Of course, there is much more to motorsport than car shows and racetracks. And today we're going to remind you about a very cool motorsport activity, also poised for a brand new season. What am I talking about? Just watch. We think you're going to love it. Carl King, you're on. I'm Carl King and today we're going to show you a kind of motorsport that is virtually silent and non-disruptive. Motorsport is sometimes criticized for noise and pollution and while we think those charges are unsustainable, particularly when viewed from a cost-benefit standpoint, today's show is going to highlight a motorsport activity that is above criticism. Now to do this we had to find a serene environment and then convince the folks in charge to allow us to take this edition of Motorsports Unlimited on their premises. We found just what we were looking for in Beecher, Illinois, just south of Balmoral Racetrack. We think you'll agree this is an unusual location for a motorsport event. This material was taped more than 15 years ago and Fish Haven no longer exists. Well, this is one heck of a way to start a TV show, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, it's probably even a more unusual way to start a day with electric model radio control boats. Yes, it is, okay. but we do it. Do you have any idea what we're doing here today with these girls no, and the feathers and all that? No. Okay, first of all, you are? Myrtle Rubbles. Uh, Myrtle, I understand something about you that you probably don't know that I know. That you are not just a wife that's dragged here kicking and screaming with your husband that is a radio control boat enthusiast. You yourself build and participate in however these things we're going to find out today, however people compete with these. You do this yourself. Yes, I do. And apparently with considerable enthusiasm, as I understand it. Right. Okay, so what you must admit that it is unusual for a woman to be doing this. Uh, it, wait, what, yes, Allison. Not, this is fun. I would do this on a weekly basis. Allison, we don't count you. Christine, it is unusual for a woman to be doing this, right? Yes, Bill. <laughs> okay. Would you agree it's unusual? Well, I've had it said to me. Okay. How could you go out and run radio controls boats since it's kind of like a man's hobby, but it isn't no more. Bingo, it isn't. In fact, none of this motorsport is. And I, and I really want, the, the again, we want to encourage all the women in the audience to please, if you'd like to participate, there's nothing else guys would like better than to help you get started. Am I right? Right. Uh, and we want you guys to participate. Now, we're going to get back to you, but first, I think we better talk to your husband, right? Right. Okay, before he bops <laughs> me over here. And I feel rain coming again. <laughs> and you are? Jack Robles. And Jack, I contacted you because I wanted to show our audience a kind of motorsport that wouldn't make anybody mad, that was totally dead silent, yet as challenging as any kind of motorsport both technically and from a technique and operator standpoint and what have you got for us? Well I think we're going to find about uh, probably about 40 radio control boats they're all electric powered so uh, I think you'll have kind of an interesting day. We try to duplicate life in a prototypical fashion as far as operation and construction a lot of people spend hundreds of hours getting the last final detail one of our club members got tiny little fish out of the pond and he proceeded to embalm them so he could put them in his 
oh. in a tub in his fishing boat. Mm -hmm. Right, let me make this point that mm -hmm. part of this kind of motorsport is attention to detail and authenticity. That is very important in this kind of motorsport, not just in the creation of these uh, I'm going to say vehicles or boats, not just in the creation of them, but also in the operation. When they do their competitive maneuvers, they very much uh, imitate what these boats would be doing in real life. Have I got it? Exactly. Okay. Our courses are designed to uh, duplicate real life as close as possible. Yes, hold on, Allison. They look like real boats. I mean, if they were bigger size, they yeah. look like the real things. Well, Allison, you haven't seen anything. Come on over here. I want you to see this. You're not gonna. I, I don't. Th if our camera can't get in here, we're gonna have to get it in here They're somehow. Gorgeous. Look underneath there. Oh my gosh! They have all the little take, supplies take and everything. Look even closer. Do you see the hammers on the <laughs> tool bench? Do you see the vices? The hammers on the. Is I kind of like the idea of having the fish on there. Yeah, it really is. You can go back over there now. Uh, so attention to detail and authenticity is very important. And I've talked to you a little bit, Jack even so far as to how you power these boats. While no, you don't power them with diesel engines and turbine engines, you make an attempt to make sure that you've got, for example, if in real life the boat has got a more powerful center engine and less power, you do right. the same thing. We try to duplicate exactly. Would you like to see the inside of this? We can open it really I, I really would like to do it. If you can open it up, because I don't sure. think our camera could have... Ah, okay. Now, that shows wait, the... wait just a minute, you don't have a mic. All right. This is the receiver. It's an FM frequency. These are the speed controls. They could electronically control the speed of the two motors, which are made by a gentleman in California. And there's a servo, which you've seen in other events, which turn the rudders. Okay, is it possible to tip this up to our camera so that Why, Chuck can get certainly. us a, a real nice shot of this thing? And go ahead. Okay, the ship speed controls can actually control the ship's left or right motion or for sharp steering as in a real boat. Okay, what you're saying then is if you wanted to turn this boat to the left that you would rev this motor up higher than this one? Or back off on the other one and reverse it. Oh, you can actually reverse it almost oh, like a tank. Exactly like a tank. Or okay, exactly go ahead. like a real ship. You can forward and reverse the motors singly or as pairs and the, therefore the operation will be almost identical. And this is all done by radio control? Right. If we can move the other end, I'll show you why. Okay, let's go to the other end. What have we got here? Go right ahead. Okay. You'll see under there the props are inside what appears to be a large tube. And those are the rudder mechanisms. And it directs the flow, just like a large jet engine might do in an airplane. And that gives it extreme controllability in tight spaces. And all your big push boats and your tugboats of modern day all have large props, usually in a court nozzle for maneuverability and also a 34% increase in power without doing anything to the engines. Okay, and this is all done, I should tell our audience, by remote control, by radio control. This all, the, the, the uh, amount of power to each engine, whether it's going forward or backward, or the way the rudders are controlled, that's all done while the boat is out off on its own, not Certainly. connected to you by anything? No, just with a transmitter. Just, just sort of like a guided missile, only a, okay, <laughs> a lot I, slower. Okay, now I want to get your wife out here again. Sure. If I can ask you to step back for a second, right back between the girls there, they don't bite. Myrtle, if I can get you out here now. I understand that one of these boats is yours. Yes, sir, it's the one at the end. Let's walk around down there and show it to our audience, if you would, please, over here. Walk right around over there, and I want our audience to see this. First of all, I've got to ask you the question. Did you really build it? Uh, I'll accept some of the servos and the, uh, to get the motor and the connection, the stuff in box. So Jack kind of helped you there? Yes. Okay, but you built the rest of it? Yeah. Okay, nice. tell us what you've got here, and I'm going to turn it so the camera can see it a little bit better. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, what have we got? I'll show you in here the uh, controls that run it. This is a tugboat, tugboat, and we do put push barges. I enter a contest, and we push barges. And okay, so and you the actually do then with this what a real tugboat would yes. do? Yes, sir. We have the tow string here. I tie it on and. Okay. Now, a little later in the program, uh, we are going to have some people tell how these things are judged, because obviously this is a competition, too. It's not just a matter of, okay, it does it fine. You actually compete with each other to see who does it best? Do I have it correct? Who does it best? Yes. In other words, if you, there are several people with tugboats and you compete in maneuvers? Right. Okay. So there's a point contest. system? Contest. Yeah, a contest. That was, right. I mean, there's a, there's a point system or something like that? Yes, sir. Okay, if I could, I'm gonna ask you to step back now because we've got a young man stepping over here and I wanna get him out because there's nothing I like to do. Please, son, come on over here. There's nothing I like to do more than encourage youngsters into motorsport. First of all, you are? Matthew Klopp. And where are you from? Chicago. Uh, I understand that one of these is yours. Yes. Okay, first of all, how old are you? Um, 14. Okay, at 14, you seem awful young to be able to build something this sophisticated. Now, did you do it all yourself? Most of it. Really? Is, yeah. this, is this the first time? Yeah. What do you think? 
It's a pretty good sport. Yeah, you enjoy it? Yeah. Okay, show our audience what you've got. Can you actually pick it up or is it too heavy? Okay, what have you got here now? A British trawler. A British trawler. Why did you select this? Oh, I just, first thing I saw and I liked it. Okay, I thought maybe it's because it had the machine guns on it. No. <laughs> okay, uh, what, now what do you do with this? Obviously a tugboat you're going to take and, and tug uh, other boats or push them, what have you. And this one obviously is one that uh, moves barges down the rivers and all that. So that would be understandable. What do you do with something like this for competition purposes? I run on some, basically the same courses with this, but um, they use it in like war boats and they, they take all the war boats and they um, judge which one's the better and how they work. Okay, I've got to ask a question because I don't really know a lot about this sport and I want to know more about it. First of all, again, I want to identify this stuff is totally silent. This is not going to annoy anybody. You could do this right in downtown Chicago and not get anybody mad. Uh, but do they have any of the boats that shoot at each other? Not that I know of. Okay, D don't, don't let me give you any ideas either. Okay, if you would, go ahead and set it back down and I thank you for uh, spending a little bit of time with us. We can feel we've got a little bit of drizzle, but before we go any farther, when we've got a brand new girl in Motorsports Unlimited, that's always an exciting time. And I want you to step forward here just a little bit and introduce yourself to our audience. I'm Suzanne Giordano. And Suzanne, are you absolutely shocked at what we have you do here today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, uh, this young woman has never seen our show and tell us a little bit about yourself. What are you trying to accomplish? Well, I just graduated from Boston College and I'm out in Chicago pursuing an acting career. So I thought I'd get a little bit of exposure and I'm having a lot of fun already, so it's great. Okay, but have you gotten used to Allison? Yeah. Like Allison's me. hysterical. <laughs> what, She's great. What? She likes me. Yeah, yeah, right, okay. Now, I want you to put your work here real quick, right off the bat, so we get you right into the swing of things. And this isn't hard. I want you to step forward right over here like this and look at the camera and say... Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. To give you a little bit of an idea of what these wonderful boats look like in action, let's take a moment to look at some footage taped later in the day. This is great. It's highly technical, requires extreme attention to detail, along with superb workmanship. Not to mention, you have to learn how to operate them well. Plenty of challenges. Remember, these boats are battery powered and silent. Now, before we go any further, let's meet the girls on today's show. Hi, I'm Ashley Robbins. I'm Suzanne Giordano. I'm Kim Donahue. I'm Allison Damore. And I'm Chris Schutz. Thank you, girls. Now, before it starts raining heavily again, Let's meet representatives from Chicago area clubs and find out more about radio controlled battery powered model boating. You know, all of that uh, school in Boston College, yeah. acting school, to stand in the rain <laughs> isn't this glamorous? This is wonderful. Okay. Well, she's a mathematic major. She's counting raindrops. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to find out more about her as we go along. Now, I asked these gentlemen to come over here. First of all, you are? Leonard DeSalvo, president of the Northwest Commodores. And where are you from? Chicago. Okay. And we've got? Gus Kaufman, scale model ship masters, the Plains, Illinois. Uh, okay. And you guys then represent the two clubs. That, and, and I've got to tell our audience, it, it's. I hope we can give you some great pictures here today because the boats that they brought are absolutely exquisite and I mean, they've got, I don't know Chuck if you can even see it from your camera shot, they've got a PT boat out there that looks like you could, I mean you could ride on it or something, you know. They've got some just incredible equipment and I hope we can show it all to you and show you how it works and all that. But before we go any further, I first want you to know a little bit that there are clubs that do this. And can you tell us a little bit about how this works, uh, assuming you have club events with competitions, is that how it works? Yes, we have competitions um, around the Midwest, usually in August. It's the uh, IMPBA Internets, it's called. 
and uh, this year it'll be held in Battle Creek, Michigan, and you usually get 50 to 60 boats entered, and we run through a uh, competition of uh, buoys. Okay, now do you have any local events? Now that sounds like a once a year deal, but do you have like several during the course of the summer or for club, you know, for just your clubs or a couple of clubs? Yeah. Our club meets the second Sunday of each month in uh, Elgin's Lord Park. Oh, so you actually do have like a every couple monthly. of a monthly event? Monthly event, right? What about in the winter? Mm -hmm. In the winter, we meet from uh, November to May, to April at the Bensonville Library in Bensonville, Illinois. Oh, where really? We have, where we hold clinics, show how to fiberglass, electronics, different motors to use for what length boats. Okay, so presumably you guys are more than willing to help anybody get started. Sure. Sure. Okay, cause I'm trying to think. The Bensonville Library it seems to me they've got a model airplane. Christine, yeah. help me. The name you remember? Miniature aircraft racing? Competitors. Yes. Miniature you, aircraft competitors. Do you know those fellas? No, not really. Okay, no. Well, I'm glad to see that we've got libraries that mm -hmm. are supporting these activities so well. Okay, so you have essentially then you go to a body of water where you can get permission and. We have permission from the Elgin Park District. Okay. And it, we get to use the pond. And then you set up buoys? Yes. And do maneuvers around them? Through them. Through them. Okay, yeah. now don't go away. Uh, I need all the help I can get out here. Now, I want you to pick up on this now. If we've got all the buoys set up and we've got the boats out there and these guys are going to maneuver in some way, how do we pick who wins? What, how do we come well, score? Actually, it's a, actually, it's a judging program of how well they run the course. They've got to go between certain buoys in a certain manner, back up forward and do a zigzag course through it, pull up to a dock. Uh, and go through a maneuver that would be to uh, simulate the actual docking of a boat and uh, proceed from beginning to end. They start from a slip and they go out and run the course and come back to a slip. And uh, their points are deducted if they hit the buoys. Okay, so touching a buoy, you lose a point. Right. Uh, what else? Uh, missing something missing completely? Missing a buoy is the same way. Or, uh, basically, it's uh, based on time and how well they run the course without hitting buoys. Okay, well, now what about judging as far as, I mean, every one of these boats that I've looked at here today, and I don't know if these are typical of what you guys have or just the well, show winners, but it seems like there's so much attention to detail, there ought to be some way of scoring that as part of the process too. Well, basically you have two forms of judging. The one that we were just talking about, Lenny and I, is the running, and then they also have the static, which persons like myself go through and uh, do with judging as to how well the boat was built, how close it is to the real thing, uh, what attention has been done to detail, how many different functions a, a boat can do, and uh, things of this nature. Boy, I would imagine then that a person that is skilled at both building and in the technique of this thing must have years of experience. Oh yes, definitely. Uh, <laughs> I think I joke at the store over there sometimes, I said the first rubber band airplane model I made was 1937 and I've been doing it ever since. And I'll bet still learning. Oh yeah, I, I far from knowing at all. Okay, now we've got a girl's got a question on Motorsports Unlimited. One of the girls has a question. We stop everything. Christine. No, I was just wondering from what you were saying. Then apparently there are different classes that a person can uh, can join. Good question. Classes. Well, there's not. Uh, you mean in the building classes or no, different. or different classes of boat? Okay. Well, usually you have civilian which would include uh, power boats and racing boats of that nature. We then also would consider tug boats and uh, work boats of that nature. And then you get into the military, which is another category. So actually, just about everything you see in, in real life, there is a category for it. Okay, so your, your club then is Scale Model Ship Masters? Yes, right. And you guys are out of this plane? Yes. Okay, and you guys, would, would, it, would it be fair to say that you guys emphasize the authenticity in the building more than the actual technique, or am I incorrect? No, uh, well, we go for scale. Yes, just the same as the other club does. It's just, it, we're both actually scale clubs. Okay, so they're both scale so, clubs, so and I just, I'm just trying to grasp from the name right. if there's something implied there. Well, you got to have a different name than they got. So. Oh, okay, <laughs> but eventually you guys are kind of the same. <laughs> right, but basically we're into the same uh, venture as, as to the hobby. See, they're interested in scale, we're interested in scale. Now, are you, I've seen some of your other works where you've done speedboats. Now, that's another type of event. Right. I want our audience to understand today, first of all, there are all kinds of ways to participate in motorsport, but you don't have to be an Indianapolis driver to be involved in motorsport. And here's an excellent example of something that you can do that's not going to make a lot of noise, that you don't have to do gasoline, you don't have to start engines, uh, that you can maybe take on the role of a fine craftsman and then 
I'm guessing, because I've watched some of these guys operate these crafts, they almost have the skill of a surgeon while they're trying to make these maneuvers. Do I have it halfway right? right? True, true. Okay, so there's all kinds of ways of participating in motorsport, not just jumping on a racetrack and going. Yes, Allison? I have a fun idea, and they might do it. Do they have like a boat demolition derby? Allison, we don't want any ideas from Allison. No, no, no. <laughs> after, you put, after you put thousands of hours into this? Well, something a little more minimal. Right. In fact, there is, isn't there a club in California? Don't encourage military? her. Military? <laughs> right. There is a club in California that they build military ships and they and they shoot BBs. And it is the boat, that last boat that is afloat wins. Well, that would be kind of interesting, yeah. actually. That, that does not, oh, you sure, know, when it was my idea, it was they goofy. They actually against each other. Well, you know, I'll tell you something that I think about because years ago I used to have uh, something that I think if I had the power to do it, I would make it a part of every single school curriculum would be the SD's rockets, if you guys are familiar with them. Mm -hmm. And I can see that these things, this would make an excellent launching platform. For, uh, it's doable, isn't it? Oh, well, sure. Sure. It's Somebody could, could... His PT boat, uh, the sides there are set up. He has a radio controlled uh, torpedo. Really? He can oh, fire torpedoes? Seen. Yeah. Oh, unbelievable. He has it already. He's just trying to make it so it'll... So it, it dives too much now. He wants it to stay afloat. Same problem the military had during World War II, yeah. trying to trying to get the torpedoes that's at the right what, level to hit that, the ship at right level. That's what those sides are set up for, so he well, can remotely control drop. The this boat. No, uh, it's unbelievable. Listen, oh, guys, I, I want I don't want you to run away. I want to thank you because I wanted to give the folks an idea that this is kind of an organized thing, and we've got guys out here. Anybody's interested in this thing, you guys be. I asked you before. You guys be happy to help people start, right? Well, that's one of our main problem uh, things that we do at the club. That's uh, like he says, they have seminars there at, uh, in the winter, and uh, we have seminars at our club for the six months, six months out, and six months in. In the six months in way, we try and teach anybody that is building a model all the techniques and what they can do and what they can't do and what not to do and uh, get them through so that they get a nice working boat on the, bo on the pond. Okay, so there's plenty of help out there for people who want to get started in this. Now, I'd like to get the gentleman in that uh, that owns these boats here. Please, sir, step right on in, uh, right over here, right in between us, and you are. I am Dick Lund, uh, Mount Prospect, Illinois. <laughs> okay, tell us what we've got here. First of all, I'm going to ask you, did you build them? Uh, this one I did. Uh, this one I bought, built, and the sailboat I built. Okay, I don't know, so Chuck. If you can, three. if you can get shots of all these things, because these are beautiful boats. And this reminds me, I'm going to say Chris Craft, but you're probably going to tell me a century. Century. Okay. <laughs> okay. And believe it or not, I'm old enough to remember them both as full-size boats. Okay. Uh, how long did it take you to put some of these? Is this uh, all this wood? Was, first of all, it's all wood. Uh, was about one year's work. Uh, this is a prototype for a. Uh, model that I produced 100 registered number with the exclusive license from the Century Boat Company. So there are 99 more of these out throughout the country. The you you built? A kit. Yeah. You built all, all 99? The work, all of, no, I didn't build the 99. We put it in a box, put the parts pieces in a box, the fittings, which patterns okay, but you were made, made the kits. Cast, then. made the kits. Yeah. Well, that's very impressive. And now what have we got here? Okay, the Seabex in the middle is an oil rig support vessel. Uh, it's German registry and uh, was used in the North Sea. Uh, it's an actual scale model of a vessel uh, that uh, is computerized to keep it on station to support the North Sea oil rigs. Boy, it's, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And, and, and the sailboat. And, and matter of fact, I want our audience to know, and I hope we can get the shot of this, this actually has a helicopter port yeah. here. The helicopter on that, although it doesn't take off from the deck, the rotors will go around. The crane that's on the uh, stern of the boat will actually fully operate. And the uh, monitors that are on the stern are actually pump water. Boy, what a piece of work. And the sailboat. And the sailboat uh, was a German kit from the Roby Company that I converted into a Sabre 34, which was made out on the East Coast in the United States. And that's why the S and the 34 are on the sail. Okay, does it have a motor in it? It has a motor for auxiliary power. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to get the sails to go up and down so that I can take it off from the shore under motor and then raise the sails when she gets out. You want to do that by remote control? Yes. Oh boy, you're quite a builder. That's that's uh, yes, uh, yes, Christine. Um, I'm wondering, do most people build the boats from a kit? Can you actually go to a store and buy a boat that's already built and just go out there with it? You can do some. Uh, the Seabex, for example, as I said, I bought that ready-made. That was made by one of the members of the Northwest Commodores, which I also used to be a member of, uh, who passed away. And when he passed away, I bought that from the estate. Okay, so it can be done either way. The, the, as a matter of fact, when I talked to Jack on the phone, Jack was, let me just finish the thought. When I talked to Jack on the phone, one of the things that he told me is that, is that what most of the guys do is they buy what they call like a real basic kit, which gives you the hull and the deck and all that, and then they go to great pains, like you saw all the stuff he had in there, the little hammers, the vices and all that, and it's starting to rain, make your question quick. I was just going to ask, how much does something, what is the price range of something that's, you know, elaborate? One dollar to a jillion dollars. Have I got it right? <laughs> it's starting to rain. Okay. We gotta close, it's raining folks. Kimmy, tell the camera. Don't go away folks, we'll be right back.
When the rain came again, it forced us to move the interviews to a drier place under the awning of the motorhome. While the quarters are crammed, we think you'll see why we work so hard to show you these magnificent military vessels. Well, we have certainly been ducking in and out of one shower after another, haven't we, Ashley? Yes. <laughs> and you just had it going down your back off the canopy. It's fun, though. <laughs> I'm having a ball. <laughs> it is, and I cannot, I cannot not take advantage of having all these exquisite boats here today. And, and I, I don't want to stumble all over myself and, and, and redundantly talk about what works of art these are. But these are works of art. I mean, I cannot believe beautiful. it. They're, pardon me? They're just beautiful. The detail is unbelievable. And this boat, the entire boat, is built of sheet metal. It everything really, it really is everything on it is built of sheet metal everything on it literally I'm not gonna say everything because I'm sure there are some pieces that were made but first of all you built this correct yes I did four and a half years of it okay and I want to it's, turn you um, to the camera just a little bit and you yeah. are uh, what your do you name? want me to say oh my name's Art Carlson and where are you from Art uh, Des Plaines uh, Illinois okay you're from Des Plaines and you spent four and a half years four building and half this years boat on this. okay the right. automatic question is it's got to be 15 it's times harder building it all out of sheet metal like this why why did you do it I'm a carpenter by trade. Which would but, mean, uh, why I mean, do you do my sheet metal? I was so inspired to make a, a sheet metal uh, ship model. The destroyers of World War II were called uh, tin cans, so I figured I may as well make a real tin, tin can. Well, you certainly did, and I guess the question I've got to ask is, where do you get, this looks so authentic, where would you get plans for something like this? I got them from uh, Gus and uh, Dick Lenz, uh, that store over on... Should I advertise? <laughs> well, I, I guess what I want to know is, is, is guys from the club and all that? Guys from the club. Right. Okay, have, give you the, the, the assistance on all this. Now, I assume um, that this boat actually runs, that it has the radio it, controls uh, and all that stuff? They sold me the Dumas motors. I uh, have the batteries, everything to go with it. Uh, Bill? Yeah, hold on a minute. Yes. What is the boat called? What kind oh, of a boat? A tin can. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it is a name. Uh, it's, I, patterned, I mean, named it after the uh, Joseph P. Kennedy. Oh, this is after the... One of the Kennedy brothers that was killed in World War II. Okay, and uh, destroyer, uh, is this boat then an authentic representation yeah, of that boat? Joseph P. Kennedy, right. It, it's it, a gearing class destroyer. So, but this, this is an authentic example of that. It's, it's not oh, kind of like one of those no, boats. It's authentic. Wow, what a piece of work yeah. in four and a half years. I can see it. i got to ask you, what, have Real you been doing this all your life? or? Uh, I've been interested in this all my life, but the last ten years or so I've gotten into sheet metal. Okay, have you conducted any of, the, or involved yourself in any of these competitions that these guys, uh, we, we talked about them earlier, no, maneuvering and all that? And, no. Okay. I've been uh, involved uh, just putting out in the water and having fun with it, chasing ducks. Chasing ducks. No, we don't want to tell that to our audience. Duck yes. Uh, waving over there. Wait a minute. We've got a problem here. Uh, out of bed. We've got a technical problem here to solve, and we know how to fix this. So, folks, uh, Allison. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. You see what I mean about why we were so determined to show you these wonderful boats, raining or not? Now, let's return and look at the huge battery-powered PT boat. Well, we are really fighting this one today, if it's not a technical problem. Anyhow, uh, we've got another absolutely incredible boat here, and first of all, you are? I'm Hugh Adam. Uh, Hugh, where are you from? Itasca. And you are? Toad. Uh, do you, no, why don't you, and your last name? Adam. Okay, so obviously father and son then? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, you're going to be careful with that because you're going to blow us to kingdom come, right? Uh, not exactly. No <laughs> warheads. Okay, first of all, absolutely incredible piece of work. I've got to ask you what provokes somebody to build something like this. This obviously can't be a kit. Um, no, it's not. There is someone who does make a kit in California, but I didn't want to spend the money on it, so almost all of this is scratch built. Uh, my uncle helped me with it. He's a carpenter, uh, model maker, retired, and it's almost all wood and plastic ABS. Okay, it is an abs. Again, I, sometimes television doesn't do this sort of thing justice. The detail work on the machine guns and uh, the the bullets. belts of the, yeah, the what did you say? Al? The bullets on the belt. Yeah, the belts. I mean, the detail is just absolutely exquisite, and yet this is a working model that oh, yeah. you can take and run. Yes, it is. It has uh, radio control speed and also rudders, and it, this. Uh, torpedo is also radio control. It also has a speed control and rudders, and it launches off the tor off the torpedo rack. 
Right, one of the gentlemen earlier mentioned that somebody had done that and apparently he was talking about you and you actually apparently designed the torpedo and I assume this launches it by re radio control? Yes, it does, it does. It uh, launches off the a rack that I made and uh, inside in here I have a gearbox so that the propellers are actually counter-rotating just as a real torpedo would be. Because you can't deal with the torque reaction of right. rotating you your torpedo. Right, spin in the water. Right, and uh, you also have the same problem, as I understand it, that they had in World War II, is trying to get these to run at the proper depth to do the maximum damage when they strike the target. Yeah, the early uh, torpedoes were pretty lame, and so that, that gives me a real excuse if anything goes wrong. I can just say it's perfectly to scale. Well, wait a minute. You guys, are, you guys are laughing, but wait just a minute. That was a major problem in World War II when they were doing these things. You want to hit the boat below the water line, but if you have the torpedo running too low, they, and it happened very often, it ran right, right under the boat. You can't do anything. Allison, you had a question. I have a question. They've got all these surface boats. Do, you have a, do they have actually in the clubs any submarines? Well, I saw one flying around out there. The young man here is nodding his head. What, what do you want to tell us? Um, we do have a few. They actually form clans almost. They're, there's just groups of them, and they have uh, their own show every year. And we've got one person who has two, actually, in okay, the club. Okay, well, we're definitely going to... First of all, i got to ask you, how old are you? Uh, Twelve. Now, do you participate in the construction of any of this? I help out. Okay, do you enjoy it? Yes. Okay, again, I don't want to harp away at this stuff because I hate things being inflicted on me, but if I had the power with the school systems, these would be mandatory parts of every school program. They really would. It also makes a lot of sense. It teaches the motor skills, and I think it... It teaches everything. It teaches science. It teaches physics. It teaches craftsmanship, and I don't want to speak... Do you guys agree? I agree. Yeah, I've learned quite a bit from doing this. Teaches history. Pardon me? Teaches history. Yeah, you're exactly yeah. correct. Well said. It teaches history. It, literally everything can be learned. I know as a young man I built a jillion boats and a jillion model airplanes and a jillion model cars. I certainly learned from everything that I built and I'm glad to see a young guy like this. You're apparently not dragged here. You you enjoy this. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. Well that's great. When you can do when you can learn and have fun and enjoy doing it, I can't think of anything better than that. Now we've got to get some more of these fine boats and I could easily do an hour on each one of these things. Congratulations, gentlemen works of art. They really are. Girls, everybody together. Don't go away folks, we'll be right back. Bill was continually surprised by the types of vessels selected by radio-controlled, battery-powered boat modelers. The variety of interest was refreshing. Let's watch. Kimmy, is this the craziest day that we've had in some time? It has been a crazy day, very. Yes. And we're talking about the weather, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you notice, the girls aren't wearing the feathers anymore because the dye on them is water soluble <laughs> and they'll end up with it in their hair. And what's it doing right now? It is sunny. It's beautiful right now. It is beautiful, but we can't trust that. Because... We can't trust it, so we've got to hurry here. First of all, we met this gentleman before, but I'd like you to reintroduce yourself to our audience. Leonard DeSalvo. Leonard, you built this? Yes. Uh, from a kit, or is this something you it's built from kit. scratch? It's a sterling kit. Because it's, I mean, it looks like something you handcrafted. It looks like it's all wood. It doesn't look plastic. It is all wood. It's all wood? Yes. Okay, give us an idea. What is it? What do we have here? It's a model of a 1953 uh, sterling Chris Craft Corvette. Okay. It's a model of a Chris Craft Corvette, a 1953 version. The portholes say it's a 53. Okay, like a Buick. Right. Okay, can... 42 footer. In real life, this is 48 inches long. So you're an inch per inch foot? Inch to the foot, yeah. Okay, now I understand you can pull the top off of this so we can have a look at what's inside? Sure. Okay, now we got Kimmy down here specifically to explain this to our audience. Now, is it possible to tip that up for the camera or is that way too hard to do? Mm, she wants to grab the front. Kimmy, if you come down there, bit. help him so we can see this. And I want to I want to point out to our audience. Yeah, just... Take it like that. No, go. yeah. And Chuck, you'll have to give me a nod of the head if that's seeable. I want to tell the audience that what we've got in here is furniture. We've got a sofa with a guy laying on a sofa. There's actually a miniature picture here of like the person's family. But on the technical side of it, we also have two of these electric motors. Uh, speed control. I'm sorry? Speed control in the middle of black boxes, the speed control. That would be this? Right. And what else? This is for the horn. And this stuff? That's for the lighting. 
And what are these, uh, what appears to be auxiliary batteries to me? Batteries, yeah. Okay, now that's yeah. batteries for, for running the boat? Right. That's all it takes, is that small amount of batteries? There's another one on the ground here. Oh, so you put another set up here. Yeah. Okay, you can go ahead and put it back down because I know it's heavy. This thing is absolutely exceptionally done. You guys, again, I, I can't, I'm stumbling all over myself for words here to try to, when I see people that put this kind of work into these things, uh, I really want them to be flattered and complimented and appreciated, and I find myself just repeating it over and over again. But Kimmy, this is all new to you. What do you think? It is beautiful. I can't. I just can't believe the detail that goes into it. Yeah, it, it really is quite a sport. Now, I've got a lot more to look at. Please don't run away. Let me move on down here. We've got a group of boats here. Christine, what do you think? The detail is just you know, you really have to see the boats in person. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And as a matter of fact, we probably ought to find out where, or in fact, we will get the information. If folks want to call us, we'll tell them where they can go to see these things operating. Now, first of all, you are? Arthur Gallant. And where are you from, Arthur? From Chicago. You built these? Yes, I did. Yes, uh -huh. with a lot of time and patience. How many years have you gotten into these three? Well, I bought six years, two, two years apiece. This one here isn't finished yet. I still have the masts. The masts have to be put in place with the wires, the mast, the forward and the back mast. Do you There's enjoy of, do, you, oh. do you enjoy building or operating them more? Building. Yeah, I think I, uh -huh. I'd kind of be that way, I think, too. Yes. Tell us what we have here. What kind of a boat is this? Well, this is an Italian tugboat uh, from prior to the Second World War. Uh, it was originally a, a pan art kit. The name was the Antio. But I did a lot of uh, modifications on it, and I come up with uh, with this. I renamed it the Samana K, which was the Colum Christopher Columbus's landfall when he discovered uh, when he was looking for China. But he this was uh, Samana K was the landfall that he landed on in the West Indies. There seems to be almost a little history attached to each one of these boats. Well, yes, there is because. Um, they're actual, they're actual ships. I don't know about this one still being in use or existing, but I know these are, these, the other two. Okay, what have we got here? Go ahead and tell us. Well, about this is a Belgium, this will be a Belgium shrimp boat out of Zeebrugge, Belgium. Incidentally, that's where I'm from. Well, now that, I was going to ask what your motivation was to select yes. these craft. Uh -huh. I, I, always, I always wanted to build a Belgium fishing boat, and I'm building this shrimp boat out of Zeebrugge. And what have we and, got down here? And this is a uh, fishing trawler out of Bridlington, England. I don't know if you can see it. it come. Now, this, I was on this fishing trawler in Bridlington. I had a chance to go over there and meet the owner and the skipper, and he took me aboard. I'm going to run on down to the next one because I'm very concerned about the weather, and I okay. really would like to see all of the boats that we've got here today. Thanks so much for sharing okay, them. Please don't run away. Okay. Okay, now down to this end, and of course, there's no way that Bill Wilt can walk past the pretty girl without first introducing her to our audience. You are? Jenny Collier. Uh, Jenny, where are you from? Oak Park, Illinois. And I understand that you operate all of these boats. <laughs> or you're an expert on building them. <laughs> Both. Oh, okay. Uh, do, we, do we have to talk to the guy? Yeah. Yeah, I was afraid of that. You are? I'm Billy Holt. Uh, Billy, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. And? Joe Sarnaska. From? Norwich, Illinois. From Norwich. Now you guys have a real interesting thing here. Why on earth would you have a duck? This is actually, and this thing, by the way, folks, this duck laying down here actually does, I don't know, run or runs, yeah. or Straight swim. Up. What would we say? It basically swims. It's uh, the only reason why I built it is because nobody has had one out yet. Well, I guess so that's that's good enough reason. In fact, when the gentleman over there was saying that he chases the ducks, maybe this is what he yeah, meant, chasing he this meant. one. That's what he meant. And the speedboat is. Um, Tell us, now, now, I was a surprise. I assumed all of the electric boats would be very slow. This one you say is how fast? That that electric boat will do about 35 miles an hour. Actual, that's, that's amazing. Actual miles per hour, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I, I didn't know that any of the electric boats were that fast. Does yeah. it chew up batteries real quick? Yes. Yeah, I only was going to say it's got to eat them up. Only about four minutes to oh, a pack. About four it. minutes. Okay, hopefully, again, folks, I hope we're going to get a chance to see these things in action. I'm real worried about the weather here because it looks like we got a dark cloud coming over. Please don't run away. I need all the help I can get out here. Thanks for spending a little time with us. Uh, now. We've got a one-man boat building factory here. This is absolutely incredible. All of these boats that you see in front of you here, and again, there's enormous detail in each one of them, and a wide range of types of boats, all built by one fellow. You are. Uh, my name is George Snyder. And where are you from, George? Uh, out in the Warrenville area in the west uh, suburbs. Okay, and? Brennan Snyder. Uh, obviously your father? Yes. Now, do you enjoy this stuff, or does he drag you into it? I enjoy it. Okay, do you build any yourself? No. Only model cars. 
You do model cart? Yes. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you something. When I was a youngster, I started out building the ships, but I, I must say that when I was your age, they didn't really have model cars. They had model ships and model planes, so I did that. And as soon as the cars came along, maybe because I was getting towards the years when I was going to get a car, I went completely to cars, too. So right now, the cars hold your attention? Yes. Okay. But there's nothing wrong with that, is there? No, there certainly isn't. Uh, he enjoys them and uh, leaves me time and space for the boat, so... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Now, Suzanne, perhaps you go ahead and give us a little bit of a technical explanation, particularly of the submarine that we have in the center here. No, I think I'll leave that up to you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I don't know enough about these things. Tell me, first of all, why the wide range of vessels? I uh, travel for a living uh, doing automotive training. I get to visit hobby shops all around the country, so I look for all the free, cheap, and inexpensive bargains of life and come home with uh, something every time I travel. And uh, like all the different things, I just like to build different stuff. Okay, do you like building better or running the boats? Uh, both of them. I like to build. I build relatively quickly, and I like to run them also. And I uh, belong to a nice group with the, uh, the club I belong to. Okay, pretty much like my approach to racing is I've always said that if I were ever in a position where somebody just gave me a ride, where all I have to do is show up at the race, I can drive it, I really wouldn't be that interested in that. Or on the other hand, if all I could do was build, I, I kind of want to feel the results yeah, of my work. Exactly. So it uh, works out good. You, know, you can do whatever you care to do. I like to work in plastic and balls of wood and such and it's a, a good hobby and it fills in my times when I'm not off traveling. So. And I would think, I'm just guessing, it would give you something to do with your son? Uh, yeah, we, we do that and we're going off to uh, Michigan in uh, later August to go to a boat competition. So right, and I understand that's part of this too, a lot of the traveling around with the different compositions? Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, Michigan uh, August and uh, down in Indianapolis in September. Okay, give us an idea. Starting at that end, Chuck, so we can keep this straight for the audience, what have we got? And move right on down and tell us about each one. Okay, on the uh, our right here is a victory ship, the gray ship, uh, which is something that's used in World War II that's built by the hundreds and thousands that we use to supply all the other countries with cargo. The brown ship next to it's an old English freighter that ran along the coast. Uh, even to this day, it still runs along the coast. I've got some English friends who said, it looks like stuff I've seen when they were a kid. It's all beat up barnacles and seaweed and stuff on it. The next freighter in the middle is a more modern, if you can say 70s or 80s freighter that you'd find off of uh, the coast of Europe. The little tiny boat in the middle is a fishing boat I built from a uh, display that I found at a drugstore called Fisherman's Friend, Cough Drops. I kind of weaseled one out of the uh, druggist and he gave me the uh, boat one and cut it apart, used the hull and built the whole top completely from scratch. The uh, black submarine's a submarine uh, from a hobby company off in Germany. I actually combined two of their subs into one sub to make it look like an American at uh, atomic tap type submarine. Before you go any farther, does it dive? Uh, certainly does, yeah. I had it out here before, and uh, if we have weather, we'll show you how it works here. Well, I hope this weather holds. I want to see all these boats in action and show okay, them to our audience. Sure. Uh, the next one over here is a tow boat. I don't know why they call it a tow, because it actually pushes barges on the Mississippi, but it'll you know push the big strings of barges, see like 10, 15, 20 barges on the river. The gray sub's a kind of my rendition of a German U-boat from World War II. Uh, has a number of figures on it, as most all of my boats do. That's got about 15 figures. The Victory ship has about 100 little figures on it. And the final boat here, the big green one's a fishing trawler that has some animated features to it, so I can kind of drop and pull the net behind it. And that's the half of my fleet here. The other half's at home yet. You've got more than this? Yeah. Well, boy, yeah, you are a prolific house. builder. There's no question about it. I want to thank you for spending a little time with us. Again, I'm worried about the weather. Yes, you want to throw um, something in? That boat was in um, one of the... Um, a movie, and so was that one. Really? Not, not, not movies. He'd, he'd seen boats like that in yeah. movies. Oh, okay. But not the same ones. Yeah. Just different details yeah. on, like my dad does. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, again, if we weren't fighting weather, I'd like to find out more about it. I am amazed at the boats that these modelers select. One would think that everyone would want to build the Forestall or something like that, and yet what they seem to be building is more obscure boats, and I'm curious about that. Do you have a... Uh, kind of what you like or what you find. I, I find myself building a lot of stuff I enjoyed seeing as a, a kid or I've read in magazines or as Brandon said here, you've seen in movies and such. Mm -hmm. and, and also my criteria has got to fit across the back of my minivan. If it doesn't fit, I can't build it. So. <laughs> oh, it's got to fit in your, in your yeah. vehicle. Okay, that's a good... Uh, Suzanne, what do you think? Did you think there was this many people involved in this stuff? No, actually I'm surprised and everything is amazing. The detail is incredible. I, I, I can't help. These people should be extremely proud. We are delighted to have a, a, the privilege of showing these things to our audience. You guys really do nice work. Uh, thanks for spending a little time with us. I want to get right down here because we want to get to these folks in the back here, and I don't want to cover them, so we are going to move our equipment around a little bit. Are you familiar with our show? Yeah. Do you know what I want you to do? So you'll we'll be right back. Okay, would you leave that camera? Yeah. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. <laughs> of
motorsport piques your interest but you don't know anything about modeling, both of the presenting clubs, Scale Model Shipmasters and the Northwest Commodores Model Boat Club, are more than willing to help you learn and we would be happy to put you in touch with them. Now, let's return to Fish Haven in Beecher, Illinois and look at more of the fine work done by members of these clubs. Christine, do you remember when we were on the Illinois River uh, a couple of weeks ago, what you saw for the first time? Yes, barges. Barges and the boats that push them, right? Right. Okay, and what does this look like over here? A barge. And what's next to it? The boat that pushes it. The boat that pushes it. <laughs> what was the one called that we saw? Exxon Chicago. Exxon Chicago, and these folks are familiar with that. I talked to them before. Okay. Okay, uh, now, first of all, you are? I'm Frank Uherrick. This from? Westchester. And? Charlie Uherrick, West Westchester. Okay, now I don't want to talk to the guys. We always want to talk to the pretty girls on Motorsports Unlimited, and you are? I'm Uherrick, Westchester. Okay, you guys are all from Westchester then, huh? Okay, that's great. Uh, barges. Why a barge? Reason. Uh, this, you're going to talk for it. I'm going to talk for it. Okay. Uh, the reason why we wanted the barges is we wanted to show an actual working model of a push tug. And to have a push tug, you need barges. Well, the, uh, obviously, yes. so you built the the push tug first, then yes. the barges? Yes, we, we built the push tug first, and we had it in the water, and it looked sort of small. So we wanted to add a little more length to it, so we thought we'd build a pair of barges to add to it. Okay, now what I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can do this here today, is that we can get the stuff in the water and actually show you guys pushing. Is that doable? Yes, oh, yeah. certainly doable. Okay, if it doesn't pour again. Right. <laughs> okay. okay, so please don't run away, folks. By the way, who built it? He did. Uh, you built it? Yes. And you're having him doing the talking? Yeah, let him talk. Oh, he no, then you. they take the credit for it, you know? As <laughs> soon as you turn and walk away, he's going to say, yeah, I kind of built it. <laughs> he helped me with the green. He, he helped you with the green? <laughs> okay, well, I guess he can get to talk then. Yes, okay. he can talk. Please don't run away, folks, okay? By the way, the work is absolutely exceptional. Once again, we've said it all day long. The boats are incredible. If you would, sir, step forward, please, and you are? My name is Craig Danley. I'm from Palatine. Craig, looks like you're another one of these prolific builders that builds lots of stuff with incredible detail. That's not the part that interests me. What interests me is the variety. We go from military submarine to what appears to be a fishing boat to me to a military PT boat. In the and the sailboat is yours behind us. Uh, I don't get it. What, what what provokes you to select a certain kind of boat? No particular reason. I just like a lot of variety with the boats. And you built them yourself? Yes. Tell us quickly, what have we got? Well, you're right. That is a, a submarine. It's actually the same one that we looked at earlier over there. Um, well, the, just painted differently? In just painted differently, okay. yeah. And he did a lot of modification on his kit. Okay, and what's next to it? This is, uh, it's not a fishing boat. It's a tugboat. It's a uh, uh, one thirty-second scale a model of a steam-powered tugboat, a 115-foot tugboat. From earlier years? From uh, the uh, late 1800s. It towed uh, sailing boats out into the ocean. Okay, and? And this is uh, a kit that's a 120th scale of a PT boat. It's uh, The kit is supposed to be PT-109, but it hasn't been uh, designated yet as that. <coughs> okay, but it's but it, it is, is a, a PT replica boat, PT? Yes. Okay. Uh, an Elko 80-foot PT boat. Okay, Mikhail's Navy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And the sailboat? The sailboat is uh, it's a 5,800 class. It's 50 inches long and has 800 square inches of, of sail area. Well, you really have a variety of interests. Uh, yeah, I like I like sailing and I, I just like boats in general. Okay. Well, great. If I could now, because we got an awkward camera th uh, or uh, audio problem, let me step right past okay. you here. And and by the way, you're gonna be able to put these in the water? And yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope we're gonna get shots, folks. I really hope this stuff is great. And once again, reintroduce yourself to our audience, yeah. Gus. Gus Kaufman, Des Plaines, Illinois. Okay, and these are your personal boats? And these are two, uh, two of mine. One is the gray one here, which is the uh, Greenwater Navy. It's the uh, PCF, which is the ones that they used in the uh, uh, Vietnam rivers. So it's an armed river boat that the uh, military used in Nam. And the other one also appears to be, uh, well, I can't say, I was going to say a military boat because it looked like we had machine guns here, but actually these look more like a whaling kind of a thing. No, this is actually a, a model of the German Weiser. Uh, fire boat that came out of Bremen. Ah, so those are fire cannons? Those are fire water cannons. Well, or what they would call monitors. And uh, these two on the front are movable and the one in the front here is stationary, but they all three will shoot uh, about 15, 18 feet of stream of water plus move. Okay, and they will shoot that by radio control? Yeah. Are we going to be able to see that? 
Well, I think I got enough battery left. Okay, boy, I hope so because if you would, we've, we're, we're fighting this weather today. It's, it's making me crazy, and I really want to get some shots of these boats in action. And once again, reintroduce yourself. Or we, I'm sorry we haven't had John Camber before. Uh, you are? <laughs> I'm Mike Lee Hunter from uh, from Des Plaines. Okay, these are yours. These are mine, scratch built. Scratch built, so these are not built from kits. Tell us, what have we got here? Um, here we have a um, 1942 destroyer program um, a battle class and here we have a um, uh, castle class uh, frigate World War II. Here we have a um, uh, Type 22 frigate from Falklands War. You like the military craft? Yes, I like them. Okay, I, I kind of, they, they appeal to me too. I, again, we're fighting weather here and I want to get some shots of these boats in action. I thank you for spending some time with us and I want to say something here just in general. The audience, really, I'm going to find out from these clubs where they have these boats, when they, apparently a couple times a month they have meets. You've got to see these in person. Television won't do it justice. You have to see these boats in person to really appreciate it. Now, I want to know if I can put you to work for a second, can I? Yes. Okay, I want you to step real here where my camera can see you right there. I want you to look at the camera and say, okay, we'll take you to be right back. Don't go away, folks. I'll be right back. Bill promised us that we were going to be able to fish when we did the boat show from Fish Haven, and we were determined to hold him to it. Kimmy, you actually brought a fishing pole. I sure did. I'm going to fish. <laughs> I don't know. We've had, this has been raining all day. Bill, I've been fishing so many times in my life. And I have not caught a fish. I am determined to catch a fish. Well, I've got news for you. In fact, it's something I want to talk to Jim Watson about on this thing about this business about catching fish. But uh, don't run away with your pole. I got to get down here with Allison because Allison not only brought she brought two poles and she knows which one is for the wusses and which one is a real. Tell us. I want a fish. But it's rained all day. It doesn't matter. Okay, we are going to actually, in fact, we kind of had planned to do this. I've got to tell the audience something. I don't know anything about fishing. I have never fished in my life. I don't think I could actually do it. I've, I don't, couldn't do the hook in the mouth of the fish. That's why I got the wuss rod here for you. Yeah, well, okay. But I've got to, I've got to first of all, I want to introduce these folks, and then I've got a question. Uh, and, and I'm going to end up here with Jim Watson, so, because uh, we want to talk to you. But now, first of all, you are? Ray Carlson. Where are you from, Ray? Uh, Chicago Heights. Okay, and you are? Chris Reed. From? from Crete. Okay, right in the area. Right. Okay, right. and? I'm Marilyn Reed from Crete. Okay, and? Kathleen Watson, Crete. Okay, I got a feeling this is Mrs. Watson. You guessed it. <laughs> okay, how is it we didn't get you on the show before when we had him on with his car? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, you know that great Chevy he's got. Oh yeah, I know about that. Okay, he's got, Jim, is it what, 31? That is correct. Yeah, he's got a great 31 Chevy. It's all original. It's an incredible car. Now, and once again, this is Jim Watson Sr. Jim Watson Sr. has been on our program before. Jim, we have to thank you. You know when I approached you, I said we want to show folks that there is motorsport activity that is so non-disruptive that it's totally silent, that you can do it in the heart of the city, in the middle of the city parks and everything. It won't hurt anything. It won't annoy anybody. And I know that you're concerned about your fish here. This is a new venture for you, and you're concerned about your fish here. And you had no problem letting these folks come in and do this. No problem at all. Thank you. Well, and does it, does it work well? It's something? It works fine. Okay. I've got a question for you though about fishing, and this is what I don't understand. When I came down here to plead with you to let us do this down here, uh, I watched folks here. We were here for a few hours talking about how pretty it was and all that, and the only question I have, it seems like everybody catches fish. Now, I thought that fishing was supposed to be where you go out in the wilderness and you fish in a stream maybe for a few hours and don't get anything and go to another place, and finally you're the only guy that finds a place where you catch a fish or something, that that was the adventure and sport of it. I don't know how to say this tactfully, but this, this is sort of like cheating. It's, isn't it like shooting fish in a barrel? Or I mean, help, I don't get it. Well, the fun of it, it is catching fish. You know, I, you know who I ask about? You're nodding your head, Allison, because apparently you fish. Well, I've done both. I, my grandfather charters a boat out in Florida, so we've gone out where you go out all day and you don't catch fish and you get disappointed. Here you come, you'll catch fish. Yeah, in fact, John Papke, I asked him about that because that does puzzle me. It seems to take the adventure out of the thing that you, you're definitely going to catch some fish. And he says, well, it's no fun just drowning worms. <laughs> the fun is catching fish. That's what he said. Okay, it seems to me like it's cheating a little bit. Anyhow, this is an absolutely lovely place, and I want to thank all of you folks for going through the trouble that it took to let us come down here. By the way, is this the first time you've seen these kind of boats? Yes, it is. And what do you boy, think? they're great. 
Yeah, isn't this some kind of sport? It really is. And this is something that's totally non-disruptive and it's not even going to bother the fish, because apparently you stock the fish in here. Every, yes, every week. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Okay, well this is, again, it's a beautiful, lovely place and we thank you for this. And Allison, you've got something to say and I know it. I was just going to say the fish were telling us a little earlier, didn't bother them at all. <laughs> okay, no, the fish weren't telling us anything because we were in the motor home and it was pouring rain. Anyhow, can I put your wife to work for a second? Sure. Okay, if I could, let's you step right out here for just a second. This is going to be real easy. I want you to look at that camera and say, yeah. don't go away folks, we'll be right back. Don't go away folks, we'll be right back. That's it folks, motorsport that is so quiet, we didn't even disturb the fish. And yes, our lovely ladies of motorsport did get to do some fishing. We only have enough time left to acknowledge the fine work of our award-winning production team, including Chuck Itzenthaler, John Papke, Diane Itzenthaler, Mike Sabatino, and Tom McGrady. Music for Motorsports Unlimited is created by Fireside Recording Studio in Westchester, Illinois, and independent artists Roger Pauly and Jerry Herbert. Special thanks to JBTV's Jerry Bryant. And how about the stars of this edition of Motorsports Unlimited? Allison Demore, Ashley Robbins, Suzanne Giordano, Kim Donahue, Chris Schutz, and our host, Bill Wilt. Me? I'm Carl King, reminding you that motorsports are for everybody. If you've got some interest, we've got something for you. Give us a call and we'll try to guide you. This program, made possible in part by support from PB Food Products, located on 47th Street at Western Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from J.C. Whitney & Company, located just off I-80 at the Utica exit in LaSalle, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Jimmy's Red Hots, located on Grand Avenue and Pulaski Road in Chicago. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, president of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from the Chicagoland Toys for Tots Motorcycle Parade held on Western Avenue in Chicago the first Sunday in December. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts located on Ashland Avenue at 138th Street in Blue Island, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Bridgestone Firestone and your local Bridgestone Firestone tire retailers. This program made possible in part by support from Copy That, located in the County Farm Plaza at County Farm Road and Army Trail Road in Carroll Stream, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited was created to raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. You can contact us by email at msutv.com or you can write to Motorsport, P.O. Box 66242, Chicago, Illinois. 60666. We enjoy hearing from our audience. Please let us know what you think. Next week on Motorsports Unlimited, we're going to explain valve trains. So what does this have to do with valve trains? You'll have to tune in next week to see. <laughs> do I have a great job or what? All next week on Motorsports Unlimited. So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of motorsports. And be with us next week because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So uh, be seeing you. Bye-bye. And uh, keep on rocking.